Welcome to a new exciting season, 2013, Blue Zoo TV, presented by Hikari featuring Fluval. We're going to start the season off by going to visit Tuttle Gardens with Dan Thane, and we may have a few surprises along the way. We're outside of Akron, Ohio in Copley at Tidal Gardens where we're going to break a little bit of the myth where the sun doesn't shine in Ohio with our guest, Than Thane. Thank, thanks for having us. Oh, thanks for having me on your show. We talk about the sun. We're in a greenhouse. We'll get to that a little bit later. Explain why you have such a unique coral operation in a greenhouse. It was kind of an idea that we conceived a long time ago to utilize as much of the natural sun as possible. Um, this facility is roughly 5,000 gallons. And when we originally designed it to light 5,000 gallons of, of saltwater aquariums with conventional lighting technologies would have been extremely, extremely expensive. We talked in the beginning about sun being in Ohio. Why pick Ohio? Because people don't think we get a lot of sun. Yeah, definitely. Um, and when we put together the greenhouse, we didn't really know what to expect in terms of what kind of lighting we're going to actually be getting. And over time, we learned that the summertime sun here is actually far too much to grow corals. In fact, a lot of our corals tend to struggle in the summertime. You wouldn't probably expect it, but the wintertime sun is perfect for growing coral. What is the temperature that you like to keep it ideally throughout the year? We shoot for about 74 degrees. It's a little bit cooler than most people's home aquariums, but um, it tends to be a lot easier to maintain that level um, and, and try our best in the summertime to keep it under 80. And you've said it perfectly, it's a little easier to warm the water than cool the water. Absolutely. Um, like for, for a home aquarium sized uh, reef, it's easy just to run out and, and buy a chiller if you really needed to, which is basically an air conditioner for your, for your aquarium. But when you're talking about aquariums of this size, it's really not feasible. So we have to get very creative in our ways to cool the water temperature down. Fan, this being a greenhouse, there's a lot of light. But in this one section, it seems not as much sunlight as others. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah. I mean, as much as we, we've talked about a greenhouse, this system is kind of an example of where the greenhouse thing just didn't quite work out. Um, the corals in this system are what are called SPS, which stands for small polyp stony corals. The main thing that you have to provide these guys is very, very, very consistent lighting, consistent temperatures and whatnot. And because of the seasons that we get here in Ohio, uh, it's the exact opposite of consistency. So to keep these guys nice and healthy, we've essentially had to remove the greenhouse aspect from them. So we shade this tank quite a lot more, and then we have to provide um, artificial lighting that you see here, which are like high intensity LEDs in this case. And just now you're actually able to see some, some, some color. And uh, they, they would always grow, but what tends to happen is they would only color up maybe uh, through the, the brightest months of the summertime and then uh, their color would just drop right off into the browns again come about November and stay that way all the way around for the rest of the year. When I first started into this hobby, it was probably about close to 20 something years ago, uh, there weren't nearly the kind of colors available in the hobby as there are today. So for example, uh, corals essentially came in two colors, brown and green, and you're really, really, really lucky to get the green. So this type of uh, variety is called a scolemia. It's a very, very popular coral, mostly coming out of Australia these days. And you can just see like the diversity of like the oranges, the reds, the yellows, the greens, all kind of mixed together in swirls and stuff like that. This type of quality of color has never really been in the hobby in the last 10, 20 years. Do some grow faster than others? Small polyp stonies tend to grow pretty quickly. Uh, but there are some corals that pretty much um, You'll see your kids graduate from college before you'll notice any real growth in them. If you can see this, uh, this bottle brush, um, Acropora, it's the guy with the little blue tips. Uh, that guy there is, has been in our systems now for a few months now. Some of these corals have been around for years, but uh, that is uh, an example of a very, very, very fast growing stony coral. So that, for example, is called an ice fire Acropora echinata. Sometimes you can get, get lost in a lot of the little colorful names. For folks like actually selling these things, it's actually 
helpful because some, when somebody describes, I'm looking for an Acropora that is mostly cream colored with bright blue tips, they could be talking about 50 different things. If they're looking for an ice fire Acropora Echinata, it's like, oh, yes, I know exactly what you mean. I have one of those. Dan, in, in your displays here at Tidal Gardens, we noticed that there's not always a lot of fish on display. Is there a reason for that? When we put together these systems, it was, the, the fish were mainly here to serve a particular function. So some of them are particularly good at uh, consuming algae. Some of them are very good at eliminating certain pests. We also have like copper band butterflies to help with a pest anemone called Aptasia. So a lot of the fish you see, I'd say, I'd say the vast majority have a very specific function. Then corals for some hobbyists are new. Have you ever had a case where maybe a hobbyist got in over their head with a coral? Yeah, actually it happens more than you might think. Um, and this is kind of where a little bit of homework in advance will pay off. So take a look at these guys. These are carpet anemones and we've actually had to take them in as, as a rescue because this guy here on the left has eaten hundreds of dollars of other people's fish. It's a, it's a highly, highly efficient fish predator. And pretty much if it's not a clownfish, it's gonna get consumed right away by that guy. Now, both of them are the same. They're very big. I mean, they're gonna get bigger? Pretty much. They can get about two feet in diameter. And they typically don't come any smaller than that. Um, and they're so proficient at grabbing other fish. They're, they're, they have a very, very sticky sting to them. And so anytime uh, a fish comes into contact with them, they, they're very easily uh, wrapped up and consumed. So the lesson here is, if you're gonna get a coral, at least investigate a little bit before you do. Yeah, definitely. Than, I wanna stay on the sticky side of things for a moment. You have some anemones here that are really sticky, aren't they? Yeah, so these here are called an orange ball anemone. They're actually a type of a mushroom. And they're, they kind of like the carpet anemones are very, very good at catching and eating fish. And uh, just to give you an idea of just how sticky these guys are, let me show you. They'll pretty much latch right onto my finger here. You can already see him tugging away. And he's so sticky that I can lift him and the rock he's on completely out of the water. Then in this display, you have corals that are stony corals, but they don't necessarily look like stony corals, right? Right, so these guys here are actually a type of a stony coral called a hammer. And they fall into like a, a kind of a broad classification called large polyp stonies. And they s tend to have a lot more of the flowy tentacles. And so on first glance, you would think the entire thing is a soft body, but underneath there is a skeleton. So with these type of coral, can you propagate them just like you do the stony corals, because they are stony corals? Yes, to some degree. Um, what we try to do here at Tidal Gardens is mainly aquaculture. And the, the goal is to be able to aquaculture pretty much every type of coral species. But unfortunately, there's not a really great definition industry-wide for what is and what is not an aquacultured coral. But we try um, as best we can with as many species as possible to, to, uh, to propagate them for multiple generations. Then we go from stony corals, which are basically standing still, they're stable, to something here where it almost looks like they're flowing with the movement of the water. What are these? So these here are a very popular coral called a xenia. And they're actually one of the few corals that have this kind of rhythmic motion on their own. So what really looks like water flow is actually the coral moving itself in this pulsing fashion. And there's always been a big mystery as to why they do that. Originally, people were thinking that they had this pulsing motion to actually draw food out of the water, but their stalks have no uh, digestive tract or anything like that. And so there are some recent papers that are kind of discussing that it might be a way for them to maximize water flow and photosynthesis because they tend to come in from areas with very, very low water flow. So they actually make their own water flow to, uh, to provide better circulation around each polyp. Are they easy to keep? I would say, generally speaking, yes. The funny thing about this particular coral is that about 80% of the time, it completely takes over your tank. 20% of the time, they just shrivel up and just die immediately. Uh, the tank below, you have, looks almost like green tips. Is that true? Right, so this guy down here is a type of anemone an called a long tentacle. And they come in a, a variety of colors. This guy here has a purple base with bright, bright green tips. And they're a great anemone to host clownfish in. 
Do these anemones, like many others, uh, come across a clownfish? Are, are, there, are the clownfish ever turned away by an anemone? It, it's not, not always a perfect fit, is it? No, uh, they're actually very species specific. So there are certain clownfish that are attracted to certain anemones and vice versa. There's certainly anemones that don't accept clownfish at all. And then there's others that accept a wider variety of clownfish. So yeah, it, it kind of depends on the species. We're wrapping up our one episode at Tidal Gardens. We're coming back for more. And Than, when we come back for more, I have to get some of those from my marine aquarium. I'd certainly help you with that. We've only touched the tip of the iceberg here at Tidal Gardens. Blue Zoo TV, presented by Hikari, featuring Fluebell. Blue Zoo TV is presented by Hikari. All fish love Hikari. And featured by Fluebell, a Rolf C. Hagen company. Blue Zoo TV is partnered with Carib Sea, bringing science to life. Cordon. Trusted solutions since 1961, and EcoBioBlock by Wondersave Products. To email the show, go to bluezootv.com and follow us on Twitter at bluezootv.